How are guys? It's me, Bluey, from the Cancel Me Now podcast. Obviously, you know that because you're watching it right now. Um, got some bad news. About halfway through this episode, and I'm not going to point any fingers, it's either Gabe or Isaac's fault. A couple of the cameras cut out. <laughs> so you're going to be stuck on one camera for a while. The audio is fine, but you, the cameras aren't going to cut around like they normally do. Like I said, don't really want to blame anyone in particular. Probably, it's either Isaac's fault for setting the cameras up wrong or Gabe's fault for not being there to hold our hands to set the cameras up. Not my fault. I, I did everything I had to do. It's a great episode. You're going to love it. But very sorry, the camera works not as good as it normally is. Enjoy. G'day, ladies and gentlemen. The Cancel Me Now podcast is back for another week. But we have this amazing sponsor, Bluey. Papa Macros. Papa Macros. Each and every week we're brought to you by the great people of Papa Macros. Papa Macros. They have the best macros. They are the best damn food that you've ever eaten. They're delivered straight to your door. You wouldn't believe it. Isn't that right, Bluey? Yeah, mate. They're good. They're very good. Now, they, our two guests today are sober, but as I've said before, if you drink all weekend and don't prep your food, Papa Macros are there the for way you. way to so. go. And yeah. I tell you what, if you use These the boys code, don't know anything about that, but... <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, if you're a pisshead... You would love Papa Macros. Bluey loves them. He he can't. He called me Sunday night. He yeah. said, "Butts, I'm not going. I'm not going to Macca's to get a feed on a Sunday night after being on the piss all week. I'm going to get my Papa <laughs> Macros, and he ate those. And with the code Isaac, you get ten percent off, and we get a kickback for this podcast. Go and do it. <laughs> we need the cash. <laughs> this episode is going to be an absolute cracker. We have two legends, but we have Bluey here as well. You are well, you're always a legend. I'm here though, top bloke. You are on my right today. It's hard to talk to you, but uh, I tell you what, Dallas Stone, Jared Mullen, hey, smiles. How you doing, gentlemen? Welcome to the show. How are you, mate? Good, brother. Good, good. Thank you very much for coming in. We've had a very interesting afternoon. Uh, lovely uh, wife, Dickie. She was uh, she was nearly birthing, but uh, it was a false alarm. So no birth took place. There was panic. There was panic. Panic at the station. Word had got around that little Dickie was about to drop a child out of her, but we uh, we ended up going over to the hospital and all was sweet. Some, uh, what's known as Braxton. Yeah, big shits. She had big shits. Um <laughs> No, nah, she had the, Braxton, the, Hicks. Braxton Hicks. Braxton Hicks. I believe it is. Yeah. The doctor's the, like, she's yeah, not shit. pregnant. She's oh constipated. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's had too much dominoes. She's had no fibre. Um, uh. But yeah, no, so they strapped her up. They lubed her up and, and the bub's heart was, uh, was nice and numb. It was all good. Uh, but uh, I appreciate your concern. I appreciate everyone's concern. But we found out that Marlo actually had dri- uh, driven quite away. Uh, mm. and, oh, I, was, uh, I was gutted. I was filthy. He looked pissed off. Gut, <laughs> gutted or just had the shits? Oh, a bit of butt. Well, you missed us had the shits. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alleg- allegedly. We're also allegedly. joined in studio by Black Magic as well. BM. Yeah. Braz. Um, it's great to have you all here and thank you for coming in. And, oh, cheers, man. Um, right. So let's um, perhaps start with you, Dallas. Can you give a bit yeah. of a background of who you are, what you do, what's going on? Uh, Dallas Stone. I am a dedicated husband or husband to be, father, podcast host, um, third best in Newcastle apparently. What's uh, number two? Yeah, what's that? What's number two? Oh, I haven't figured it out yet. Oh. Yeah. What's number one? No. Nah. Do we need? Yeah. Yeah. Do we need? Do we need? Can, come cancel on. me come now. On. Yeah, come. podcast host and uh, what's your podcast? To the point podcast. To the point. Yeah, to the point podcast. We've had the great Bluey Nelson on uh, oh. on to the point podcast. It's about eighteen months ago, and I've still got in the car the board shorts that I knocked off from your house <laughs> that day. We were talking about that before. Yeah, yeah, they're in the car. I promise, they're in the car. How do you just flog <laughs> someone's board shorts? Been knocking off your shit. I, I know mate, a bloke. Check your wardrobe. I know <laughs> I a bloke. Steal shit every time I come here. <laughs> There's a mate of mine called. Shout out. Uh, okay, bunger. He is a full. F- he is a flog, but he also flogs he's everyone's full. clothes. Yeah. yeah, like he's a pig when it comes to this shit. He'll take underpants, he'll take towels, and he's just got a wardrobe full of other blokes stuff. Yeah, I mean, other people's clothes are. Better is he wear. Jewish? No, he's just very small. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you know, good on him. Yeah, puts a good <laughs> hell of a <laughs> tight ass too. Um, I won't. No, actually, I won't go into that story. He, uh, <laughs> Many years ago, he, he made love to a lady on the floor uh, and his parent, allegedly, this isn't him, this is someone else, probably one of his apprentices, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to go. Gonna say what you're saying, allegedly, yeah. Alleg- allegedly, allegedly yeah. made yeah. sweet love um, on his parents' floor. It was hilarious. Anyway, um, yeah, no, shout we got parents. Shout out to <laughs> mum and dad. Mum and dad, fucking. Floorboard. Hey, Gabe, can you uh, when you edit this, can you bleep his name out? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bleep his name out and his business and what he does for a living. Yeah. He met this chick at the beach or something. So we're going to go on we're with We're going to tell the story. Yeah. And he, was, he would have been about 30 at the time. She would have been about the same age. And he, I don't know if Claire's parents are still upstairs, but he fucked her in the ass on his, in his parents' house mm. on a mattress on the floor. This is a woman who taught kids. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Tough stuff. Like, imagine that. Imagine finding out that your kindergarten teacher was getting rooted in the ass on some fo- <laughs> allegedly <laughs> floor <laughs> on a mattress because he'd moved back in with them to save cash. Anyway, Bluey, what's he up? He listens man? to this podcast. Too. Does he? Yeah, he does. Ble- bleep the fuck well, out of his name. <laughs> it's all going to need beefy. <laughs> oh, also, before we get to Mullo, uh, sorry, to, point, 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 to the point podcast, go and check it out on all podcast platforms. Yeah, yeah, so all podcasting platforms and uh, yeah, also got a uh, concrete pumping business, uh, TEM Concrete Pumping. So yeah, I'll... Got my fingers in a couple of pies, but um, yeah, nah, I'm just a, a proud dad doing my best and yep. uh, also, um, I guess, a recovering addict. So yeah, so yeah, yep. in, in recovery. So just over 15 months clean and sober now. So congratulations. Yeah, mate. thank That's you. Cheers, man. guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. And this is going to be a very positive podcast, so we're going to get down to the nitty gritty in a few different things as well. But before we do that and before we talk to Marlo, producer Gabe's not here. So it's tea off time. Is that what this you're fucking cunt <laughs> gets paid an exorbitant wage, and because we've had to delay the podcast by an hour and a half, I ring him. He goes, "Oh, mate, I don't think I can make it." Well, I was close to pulling the pin too. You were. Well, I was halfway to Cold Point. So what happened is the Cold Point's like it's nowhere near where I live. <laughs> what's what's his excuse? He did, well, he didn't have an excuse. He just said, "Oh, no." Nah. So you start, no, 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 yeah. no, and I was just because I was already at the hospital. I was in a good mood. I was, I was just like, oh yeah, all right, fair yeah. enough. But he did. He just asked for a, a pay increase not too long ago. So this is. I'm starting to feel a few regrets. Um, <laughs> I'm full of shame. And, As and the great, great and powerful Steve Morris says, you've got to give hand ups, not hand outs. Exactly. So. And, <laughs> well, I feel like I'm giving hand jobs at the moment. Like, this is... <laughs> fuck me. Well, I'm in. I'm in. And the great Jared Marlin, how are you doing, brother? What's happening? I'm going good, mate. I'm really good. Yeah. This is a great setup, brother. Thank really you very good. much, yeah, mate. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm it's feel to get in one of those chairs, but maybe next one. One of the fr- French chairs that no it's one seems to care years about. old and that's 200 years old. Well, well, if you're a bit taller, you would have made it. Yeah, well, that you're sitting in Amart furniture. Is it? Oh, I love it. Mm, some yeah, of the shout, out, shout out to Amart. Great sponsors of the show. Uh, <laughs> use the code Butterfield. For, uh, <laughs> and Mullo, your your story similar? Yeah, I don't know much of a story actually. Is uh, not much went on in my life in the last <laughs> ten years. <laughs> pretty quiet actually. Real quiet. So, uh, mate, I'm um yeah, I'm four years clean and sober. Wow, so just over four years. Yeah. Probably finished I mean, just that last after time we had you. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I sure walked out of Bluey's house and went, well, you know, I'm done. You know? So, so you, you know, <laughs> you know Bluey. I know Bluey, yeah. So how, how did you? Oh, was it like at a like a? We like, didn't play together. I'll tell you, you that. Play much. together? You weren't <laughs> no, we similar not, well, similar I'm, football skill. Well, yeah, we're all sort of mates off the field. Um, in all hours of the morning, we crossed yep. paths once yes, or twice. Was yes. was there like a, a normal place you guys would cross paths? Like the the the, the part where you you know you get the little. Uh, the little fucking not what's it called the courtesy bus from the Prince to King Street is that where you'd run into each other? No, Generally, in other people's houses. Other people's houses. Okay. It's probably at your, it was probably at your down. apartment where you used to park my missus's car spot. Yeah, that's a sore point. <laughs> um, but I'd always ask for Bluey. I said, "Where's Bluey?" And they're like, "He's coming." I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> that's a lot. He's hilarious. He is a, very, he's a, there he's a great boring. man. Boring. Yeah, boring. Well, it's very rare when you're around footballers a lot to have someone that actually has a personality. It's very oh, rare. F- very <laughs> rare being around footballers and they're doing drugs. Very rare. <laughs> very rare. Well, that's what I hear. Yeah, I, yeah. I hear it's particularly in Newcastle. Never yeah, happened. Um, but you did spend a lot of time playing uh, yes. uh, rugby league for the Knights here yep. and, and for New South Wales and uh, and for Australia as well? No. No, no not no. Australia. Well, you're on the same par as all of us. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, Prime Minister's third own. Does that count? That counts, that absolutely. Counts. You wore the green and gold? Yeah. I was a schoolboy? Aussie schoolboy, yeah. Green and yeah, gold. Yeah, yeah. yeah so green and gold, yeah. Fucking oath. And your career was doing very well. You're a very, very well renowned player. And yep. um, from all reports, there were some things that happened uh, 
mainly to do with was it was it steroids or was it was it like peptides? Sort it was of stuff? supposed to be a amino acid, yeah, and the bloke stuffed up. So, but you weren't you weren't trying to juice to get like massive or anything. You were it taking something to heal help it. heal your hamstring, but right? Yeah, whatever the thing that was stuck in my I've got in my system was drosline. Yeah, it actually does more damage than does good. So it saves the system for six months. Yeah. So my argument was, why would I put something in my body that saves you for six months when we get tested every two weeks? Yes. It just does not make sense. Yes. Um, then we had the interview with the NRL. If I gave up the bloke, I would have only got two years. But I had the four years. I said, as long as you come to the interview and say what you've done, and now he skipped the country, no, no one can find him. Wow. Yeah, so. Fuck. Known him for 10 years, and, that, and that's what happened, so. And he was sort of... Deep in with all the other players and all that type of stuff. Yeah, all, it, a lot of players went to him. They had to get drawn needle and all that. And yeah, that's what you get for trusting people. So obviously, mm-hmm. you've got tr- trust issues now. And then obviously, when that happened, uh, you know, football got taken away from me. Mm-hmm. So chasing those highs and that and trying to mask all the pain I was going through. So, you know, drinking, drugging, and all that sort of stuff. And then got to a point where I had an overdose. Mum and dad found me. Um, I was like, taking my last breaths and then took me to hospital, woke up, and they're like, you think you should go to Rio? But I'm like, look, what do you reckon? Yeah. Probably. Well, yeah. I mean, no, 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 tomato, tomato. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Leanne. Go, go, go. Feed a Macca's, you'll be right. Yeah, have a beer right. and think about it. Yeah. Have a macros, 10% I'll call, off. I'll call Bluey. Yeah. 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 I want to see what Bluey does. Yeah. Oh, he's Dr. Bluey. I'm only talking to Bluey. Get out of here, doctor. Bring her up. Doctor, you know Bluey. You know what? I understand this guy. Muller, you're good. You're good, mate. You're good to go. Play on. Bluey plays all roles like Johnny Sins. He just turns up. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So I went straight from there, straight to rehab, and then that was December second, two thousand eight. and haven't touched it since. Wow, wow, not one drop so of alcohol. Drugs Who's and gone? alcohol gone. Nothing, yeah. not one thing. How do you go going cold turkey with that? Um, to start off with, it was pretty hard. Yeah, been around people that do it, but every day gets easier and easier. And now I, I don't even think about it. I've anymore. always wondered: is it because I'm someone who has um, an anxiety disorder, PTSD sort of thing from epilepsy, right? Mm. So I always wonder when someone is really craving a drug, in that dry spell when you're having withdrawals, is that that feeling that you're having that you just you just can't calm yourself, you can't be a, like be in the moment, you're just constantly highly strung? What is you that can't, feeling? You can't sit with yourself. Yeah. Okay. Like you can't sit there with your own, in your own head and your own emotions. So. You'd sit there and I'd just go, oh, I'm, I'm a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. So I'll, I'll go get on a bender to fuck, make it better. Yeah. Always worked. Yeah. 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 Well, I, th- I think that's what the disease <laughs> is. It's work. being having dis-ease with yourself. Yes. Yeah. So, well, especially from well, from my perspective, um, yeah, it was the only thing that was like calm me and especially like through going through IVF, going through, you know, these big developments in my life with my partner, it was just self-sabotage for me. But sure. it was like, because there was so much going on in my head, it was the only time I kind of had peace was, you know, snorting cocaine on a Wednesday night to, you know, six o'clock in the morning. So, And was yeah. that the drug of choice for both of you, Coke? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And that's is it is it because it's such that quick high? Like I've talked about on the show that mm. that's the only drug I've really enjoyed because you know you sort of feel like, okay, I'm going to have it now, but I'll be sweet in 20, 30 minutes. You can still be in control, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, rather Somewhat. than me drink drink a lot and be out of you know sloppy and that it sort of straightens yourself up. But I wouldn't stop until everything's gone, yeah, and then same. I'll ring the next person <laughs> who's I know partying somewhere else. I go there, and then three days later you're sitting there going, who, who the fuck are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been in my house for two days. It's me, Bluey. Bluey, too, sorry. Always Bluey. Yeah. 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 Where's Bluey? He's right next to you. Thanks, mate. Thanks, thanks for looking after me. I guess the other thing for me, like with, especially with cocaine, was both my parents were heroin, heroin addicts. Mm-hmm. Um, so from my perspective, and it's such an addict thing to do, is like, well, I'm not a heroin addict like my parents. At least, like, cocaine's the rich man's drug. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Because I was a pretty highly functioning addict. Yep. I still went to work every day. Um, most people didn't really know. Like, even my partner, Lucy, she didn't even really understand the extent of, you know, how bad my addiction actually was and how, how, how deep it actually ran. But it was just from that. Like, my life was so good and I couldn't handle it. So it was just, like, the only way I could 
handle that was by, I guess, the self sabotaging of addiction. The trying bro- to fuck it up. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah. Trying to yeah. trying to break it before it before it broke itself because I wasn't used to things going my way. Is that yeah. sort of like an imposter syndrome sort of thing? Like you, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're there and you're thinking to yourself, hey, this this isn't like something's got to go wrong. Yeah. There has to be a moment where it goes wrong. Yeah. Well, my my partner Lucy, look, you both have yeah. met her. Like, you know, she's the most amazing person in the world, and. Most amazing mother, um, you know, very successful. Say. Yeah, yeah. So you know, she's she's going to be a, a partner, you know, in her early thirties at, at a law firm, and um, yeah, it was just like you know, parts of me were like, I'm not good enough to be with this person, and then you know, our IVF journey, I was kind of the the, the downfall to it, so. I kind of, you know, beat myself up and go, you know, I can't give this girl kids, so, you know, go snort cocaine, you know, then go through the IVF journey and you you get you go through the hurdles and then watching her go through the hormonal stuff and then buying a house in COVID and stuff like that. So everything was just kind of like self pity, self loathe and the way that you, you combat that is by, mm. you know, self medicating. And that's a stressful time trying to become pregnant. Like that's only something that we sort of Claire and I have found out like over the last 12 months or so and you know blue when when you finally put a ring on your lovely partner and, and make her a respectable woman for once <laughs> who's who i haven't heard about this or we tell each other everything bluey <laughs> bluey's grown it's up it's been four years mate you haven't over seen the last him. four years i had to fill a hole since you left me <laughs> <laughs> It's someone else, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> man, to be long, that is me. a stressful time trying to fall yeah. pregnant. So for yeah. someone, I imagine it took you guys a couple, maybe a year or so, or a couple of years my, of of, fa- of failure. Not not to be disrespectful, but yeah. Uh, and that's a that may, that just compounds the stress. Three years, but Fuck yeah. Dude. So um, when Luce and I kind of got together, it was like she was a you know she was a love of my life, vice versa. So it was like we kind of just went into our relationship from the start of. If it happens, it happens. And kind of as we got through the year and then the second year, and then by the third year, like, you know, she's kind of like, it's time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're on a clock and Bruce it's like, buffer. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's time. So, and then, it, and then it was like, okay, we, I think we need some intervention from, yeah, yeah, from, you know, westernized, like, and to be honest with you, like, Janaea at, at um, Newcastle. Has the highest success rate in infertility. Um, what's their What's their business called? Uh, Janaya, yeah, Janaya, yeah. And Sponsor we, of the show, yeah. Code Butterfield, ten percent off. Ten percent off, yeah. <laughs> and, Which and is, a, it is it is expensive. Yeah. It is expensive. And a massive shout out to our fertility specialist, Mafenwi McAveen. Um, she's at the junction. Um, probably one of the best dressed. Straight face human beings of it. Like I'll throw a joke. Like you know, you, you're in there, and like I'd messed around with some, you know, um, like peptides and stuff like that. So she's saying the scientific name for them over the phone to try and get me, um, like basically like TRT because my test levels were like at three. I had nothing, um, but we found out later that I had a really bad um, herniation from playing rugby league, and I left it, and then you know ended up. Long story short, I ended up getting this you know, operation and it cooked me. But I ended up having twisted testicles. I was on a bender for three days and then I had footy train on Monday and I was going to get in trouble. So I was like, I went and got a, a doctor's certificate and I was like, I had nothing there. And I used to be able to like basically put my intestines into my ball sack and it was like a party <laughs> trick because I could push it back up. And I've just like kind of dropped me dax at the GP. I'm like, oh, I've, I've got this. And she's like, you're getting in an ambulance now. You can die. So, so yeah, the the kind of ongoing effect from that was footballers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the ongoing effect from that was, um, yeah, basically the tubing from the the testicles to get into the the the, the semen to get into the ejaculate. The vast difference. Yeah. Vast difference. Yeah. Well. Sure. Yeah, no no mass. <laughs> yeah. 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 No mass. So yeah, that's that's how we we ended up going down that route. So. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a journey, man, and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like something that I, I, it's amazing that we can do it. But you know, when you see people conceive naturally, it's like I say to them, you don't really understand how much of a blessing it really yeah. is. Yeah, hundred percent. Especially Not when you've been through that journey. Yeah, hundred percent. And then yeah, my my poor missus, like you know, she's got the you know, she's she just sees the good in everything. But yeah, going to behind closed door, I was just an absolute mess. Mess of a human being. She sounds like a lovely person to deal with that, deal with the stress of IVF and still, you know, be be there for you. Yeah, yeah. And and her job as well. Like yeah. That sounds like a very hectic 
um, you know, weight on her, but she sound, it sounds like she dealt with it really, really well. Yeah. I think, like, Jared and I are quite lucky in the sense that we're very very similar to each other. We and our, and we our, we're all the same. I'm better than you. Well, some say twins, Schwarzenegger, DeVito, but whatever. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it. I'm not DeVito. It's all but, DeVito. It's all but DeVito. it's quite funny, like, you kind of look at the characteristics of us both and both of our partners are very, very similar. They're, very, they're nurturing, nurturing, loving, caring people and you're just like, how did we get so yeah. 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 What, what was your, like, obviously Mullo had his, like, Tipping point. Yeah. When he was like, yeah, okay, this has got to stop. Yeah. What was yours when you were like, party's over? Well, I've got to give massive credit to Jared, and I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher this for your story, but it's um, like they told Jared in rehab the one thing that they that will happen was that he will relapse. And, you know, the strong mind person that he is and, you know, what made him such a great athlete was like, I will show you guys that I will not do that. I'm not coming back to this mm. place. So, I'll, like, I'll, that's probably one of the parts of your story, story that I absolutely love. But I was going to tell it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's all I have. Thanks for your time. I'm, I'm, I'm a very proud. Come mate. Go in the car. <laughs> very proud, mate. Yeah. Um, for me, up. for me, it was when, um, like, even up until like you know, it was like. Six months, three, four months, three months. I was like, well, I better rip in because it's only three months until I've got to be a dad. So it was like yeah. up until that point. And then she came early. And then, you know, seeing her with, you know, in NICU with, you know, the tubes all in her and like, she was tiny. She was 1.7 kilos. And, and to be honest with you, um, the thing that rattled me the most was my little girl was okay. She mm. was just small. She was just undercooked. But the stuff that I seen in that NICU ward, and I'll do my best not to cry here because I like it. It's amazing what they do there, yeah. and we're so lucky to have the exposure to the John Hunter and the neonatal ward that they have here. But like, you know, some parents aren't as lucky as what Lucy and I were, and just seeing that, I was just like, "What am I doing to myself?" That was the tipping point. Like that was a. I would, from that point, I was so disgusted in myself that it was like you know. I never want to be to my kid what I think of my parents. And yeah, from that kind of day, I I was just like, I'm done. I'm done with it. I want to be a happy, healthy, present dad. Um, and for that, I can't have drugs or alcohol in my life. And yeah, I don't know. You just, you, there's something, it's, it's, some people find Jesus in, in sobriety and through rehab and stuff like that. My little girl is my high power. Yeah, I was going to say, you need yeah. a higher power. Yeah. That, that is. That and is she's she's yours. the the catalyst for kind of the last 15 months of success that I've had. And, and I, I, you know, it's the best thing in the world. And I can't wait for you to, for you to experience yeah, it. Yeah, man, we're, we're yeah. so excited. And yeah. just, just even having our little our little man in there, just, you know, feeling him kick and, and, you know, making up his room and all this type of stuff. Like, it's just been yeah. like – very, very different for me, and I've I've always sort of had this idea with my career that it has to work. Like I didn't I didn't give myself an option, um, and I'm I'm working on a book at the moment, and one of the chapters is about being decisively engaged, and it's something that Jaco Willink talks about, um, who's a marine and or was a marine, now an author and a speaker. He was a Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL. Yeah. Same thing, is it? I don't know. <laughs> Pull him up. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one's military, one's Navy. <laughs> So this bloke was or just wasn't. Just because he'll just cut. Yeah. He's in the water somewhere. He, was, he, he may have swam. He's, a, he's a frog man. He's a killer. I think he was a pilot for Jetstar. And he... Um, was it Ian's fault? I think it was. Thought, no, Grant Haggins. Sorry. Um, what a but, legend. So, uh, yeah, Jarko. The Grant Haggins? Some, 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 of the, some of the best from Jarko. Anyway, he fucking... Um, I'm trying to think of another swimmer. Um, he basically said there's no... You have to win. There's no, there's no other option, and that's that was important for me with my career. Is like I have to win whatever it is that I'm doing, and I think it's the same for whether it's you know you're trying to lose weight or you're going through rehab or you're trying to do well in business or life or whatever. Uh, giving yourself that, not giving yourself that option, yeah. is an important one, or, and you having yeah, a kid or giving and yourself a, a fallback. Yeah, that, yeah. that sets yourself up for failure. Cause yeah, because he, yeah. he, he talks. If I don't do that. I'll just go to that. Yeah. It doesn't make you strive hard enough for that. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah, 100%. Because Jocko talks about that with getting up. People, I, I remember watching a, um, like a, him doing questions and um, 
someone said, how do you get up at 3.30 every morning? And it's like, when my alarm goes off, I don't give myself the opportunity yep. to have a debate with myself. I just get on my feet and go yeah. down to the gym and, you know, because he puts the photo up of his watch. He's an incredible man. Well, hitting snooze, that's an option. If yeah. you never take that option, yeah. then it's... And that's why, like, when I... If I'm writing and I write... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what I do every week and I've done it for four years, right? For videos, for whatever, for stand-up. Like sometimes Claire, Claire will be like, okay, you're tired or you haven't done this or we've done this or done whatever, you know, we've just flown in, whatever's going on. You know, let's just just take it, take a minute, take a break. I'm like, no, nah, I have to do it. If I don't do it, then it won't get done and I give myself that excuse, the next time I'll take the easy option as well. Yeah. The path of least resistance is something that humans just love yeah. and, and trying to find it all the time. But it does. It strengthens you when you don't do it. Yeah. Well, it is a safety mechanism, I think, you within the human being makeup, right? You're always looking yeah. for safety in fight or flight or whatever else. But it, it is. And it's like, you know, some days you have in business and, and Bluey, you, you know this, and well, I guess we're all, we all work for it ourselves, but it's like, especially in the building and construction industry, like there's days where you just like... I just want to leave my truck there and hope it's burnt the next day because yeah. I don't want anything to do with it ever again. But it is, but it's the same thing where you go, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. Everyone would have their own business. And it, it is, it's one of those things where you're like, you have to just do those things and push through those things because, you know, they're just moments in time. And you realise that once you have your freedom of being able to do what you want and paying yourself and living your life on your terms – it's worth it at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and it happens in, in so many different ways. Whether you you know you're doing scaffold like you, like you're running your own show, you're working hard every day. Like you show me how many calories you've burnt that day, and you oh, come in and you're yeah, fucked yeah. and all that. Yeah. Every every day you try to shop, <laughs> and he, he, you know, how many yeah. <laughs> like how many you burnt today. Three and a half thousand. Three and a half thousand. That's fucking not much in comparison no, no. to what you normally do. You're normally doing about seven thousand, and that's I'll just budget today. <laughs> that's just fucking hanging scaffold in the concrete and games. The same yeah. sort of thing. Oh, like, fuck yeah. that. Yeah. Like people, some both, people, both of them. Yeah. yeah. What are you yeah. doing now, Mullet? Scaffold. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. Oh, um, he wants a job. I got, <laughs> I got my own youth work business. Amazing. Yeah. Fuck so no. Boy over there, look after him. BM. Yeah. BM. Yeah. So <laughs> how's that going? Unreal. Yeah. Um, he's come a long way. Yep. Um, since I first got a hold of him, and um, we couldn't be proud of him. We, we got him out of, um, if you don't mind me saying, yeah, we got him out of um, the, gl the Glen Rehab um, last week, and he's just a different kid. So Oops. on the way in, um, he had to do a clean urine, mm -hmm. and he was a chronic um, you know, pot smoker and all that, just sort of mask with the pain he's been through. And he had to do a clean urine to get in. And I went away for 10 days, New Zealand on a cruise. He went through a fair bit of stuff himself, family wise, and he. Even though I wasn't there, he's done, still done a clean urine to go in. So awesome. Massive. That, was, that was, I was so proud of him. That's great. Proud of him. So he's uh, two and a half months clean now. How good is that? 20 year old Indigenous kid, it's it's unreal. That's great. So, yeah. 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 So I got that, and then I've got a um, little side business called Coach AI. Shout out. Are we sponsored by Coach AI? No. Yeah, uh, Butterfield, yeah, 10%. 15%. <laughs> 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 uh, Coach AI. So it's like a. Um, digital online coaching platform so we've filmed over a thousand drills so if you've got you know dads get thrown the the coaching role because their son plays for him like an under eights or under nines doesn't know what to do so he does red rover for an hour we um we've filmed yeah like i said 100 drills so like 10 drills with catch past um 10 drills with tackle tech so and then you can plan your session out. We've got diagrams and all that, where to put the markers, a video of the actual thing, and then a, a section where they can give, give them feedback and all that. Mm -hmm. So kids that live rurally or coaches that live rurally, like say Alice Springs, can still get the best coaching that the NRL sort of gets. Wow. So it's really taken off. That's and awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the first digital online NRL coaching platform in Australia. And yeah, so it's going well. That's massive. And yeah, it's you, huge, yeah. I mean, you know, you've got so many dads that are coaching and maybe they don't have any idea like no, you know, what, where they can start or what mm. they can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. they can have, you know, from a former NRL player who can show them the basics. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. Where it all starts. Yeah, it's all, yeah, oh, the boys are... There's a stud outfit. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a stud outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis Moore used to be assistant coach at Manly. There's... Um, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so there's, yeah, there's some good, very, very, yeah. very good coaches there. So, But then, obviously, that's the main business model. And then, like, little branches off the side. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So um, just get refining those skills and that. Because I sort of, sort of see it as the kids are growing up. So if you're... All, if you're in under 10s and you're a half or 5'8", the coach automatically thinks he knows how to pass and kick because he's a halfback. But they've never actually been shown the right, shown the right technique. So mm. they get the 
even six teams or flagging that, and they're still doing their old habits, then they, they can't kick properly. Well, in, yeah. in, in, in rugby league, there's, you know, there's Harold Matz and there's um, Jersey Flag, and they have their, and this is coming from someone who knows fucking nothing about it, but what I'm going to say is <laughs> they, um, I was never in those fucking teams, let me tell you that, they have their own way of uh, operating on a football field or their own drills and their own sort of standards that they expect or they want to teach kids. Yeah. So if you can get them into that straight away 100%. early on in under sevens, mm. then all of a sudden it's, 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 it's a it's whole... That muscle memory. Where yeah, do you yeah. see the game of rugby league going? I, I know that we saw Ponga on the weekend cop that knock and I, I wanted to talk about that uh, as far as concussions are concerned. We've spoken about it on the podcast a lot and I've sort of been very critical of the NRL and how they've handled concussions because they're very much... Um, you know, they're relying on on these tests that may or may not sort of work out whether or not someone's had a head knock or they haven't had a head knock. And when you see someone get concussed or what what you think is concussed, and then they come back on the field because they can remember this, that, or the other, it seems very. Um, it seems like a strange way to deal with it. Like for for someone to to cop what is a traumatic brain injury and then come back on the field because they've remembered X, Y, or Z and they've been able to walk in a straight line. It seems arbitrary, right? But now they're saying there's an 11-day stand-down rule they're going to implement um, basically because of of, of Kalen and and the way that he's copped. Like, where do you even see Ponga going from from here? Like, I I can't. It's it's the game that you play. It's the game that you sign on for. I understand, like, you're trying to, you know, look after kids and their futures and whatever else, but... I guess at the end of the day, if you're an athlete and you you take on the job, you have got to take on what's with it. Well, really, I, I guess there is a duty, of, after a, duty of care, a duty of care. They don't want to get sued in twenty years. Hundred percent, and and that's what it's come down to. Because what people don't understand and recognise is that the NRL is a business. Look, yes, we love the game and the product that they provide, but at the end of the day, it's all about sponsorship money. It's all about they making don't give money. A shit. They don't give a fuck. There's shit. always going to yeah. be another thousand kids that want to play. Hundred percent, yeah. and they'll just put them in there. Like, you're who gives a, a fuck? Yeah, you're just, you're a, just number. a number. Oh, case in point, like you're well, talking to one of the best who's ever done it. Right? Exactly. Like, like, have they? Do they give a shit about how you're feeling? No, no. of course they don't. No. And how? And, and that's for ninety nine percent of every other ex player that's ever played. Yeah, but you know, like like you still said, it's a business. Like yeah, you a business. can't. They've got to continue on with their life. And, and so I get, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I know, um, I know. But, but what, at what point do you go, okay, well, you know, for how many ticket sales Jared Mullen brought in, at what point do we zero. go, fair <laughs> enough, at what point? <laughs> They're there. all free. I gave Bluey free too. I, was, I wasn't paying for it. <laughs> for this revenue that you've brought Probably in and, and, and people like yeah. you, at what point do they go, well, okay, he's now, he's now got a knee injury or, or chronic arthritis. He can't walk. At what point do they go, okay, well, we need to, he needs to sue our insurance company that you know, we, we've employed because they, mm. they're, they're about, the ones that's going to look after you. What about your hamstring, though? Butch your hamstring. Yeah. Yeah, it well, looks all right. <laughs> you are looking good. Eh? You are looking good. You're good. looking good too. I thought you're, like, I, you're looking good. So I'm yeah, 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 yeah. I always thought Kirk Gidley had the biceps at, at Newcastle, but you've got some fucking arms on you there, bro. You wear tight. You wear tight shirt. It was every year. <laughs> <laughs> every My year. Circulation is cut off. <laughs> every so. year there was a photo of Gids on the on the back cover of the sports issue in preseason, and he had these fucking arms on him, and everyone's like, Jesus Christ, he must be juicing, but. They got you. Jeez, <laughs> it's, it's beetroot Fuck juice it. and tight jerseys. There you go. That's what it's yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking. I tell you what. Like so I don't know what happens to, to Ponga from here. I feel I feel for him. I feel like he, if this was Jeff Tuvey in the nineties, it's like yeah, fuck. See you next week. McDougal just stepped on his head in the ninety seven grand final, and then he's That's back. Straight yeah. on. His let's head. keep going. <laughs> he still to this day reckons he didn't mean to. It's like could yeah. have been more deliberate. He looked it down there and stood in his head. And went, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I um I actually <laughs> I reached out to Dukes to come on the podcast. I sent him a spiel about it'd be great to have you on, and he sent me a thumbs up back. <laughs> That was it. That's all he sent me. So, like, what do you want about that? No. So, time question mark. Well, well, no. I think that means he's king. No, I, I was like, okay. Whenever my mother in law writes something stupid to me, that's what I'll give yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. So, he's just giving it. Could it. be a piss take. He's just, like, fuck off, buddy. Yeah. You fucking loser. But get your papa macro. Yeah. Come and talk to me. Talk to me later. Thumbs up. Well, yeah, I was a bit tough. How long mind. was the message? Like, was it a big. Spirit? It was a paragraph. I was like, <laughs> mate, great to see. Great you to and the see missus. you. Well, thumbs up. You just gave me a thumbs up. Well but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe better just said that. It's it not. wasn't even just the thumbs up. It was like the thumbs up you send that's like, it gets a bit bigger the longer yeah. you hold the thumb up. It was, so the, blue, it was the blue thumb. It was yeah. the blue thumb. Yeah. So he, he's given it a bit of thought, but yeah. Dukes, if you want to come on. 
ten percent off. Uh, Papa Macro, so <laughs> yeah, but fifteen percent off Coach Oil. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always used to hear stories about you, Marlo, at, at like at, this be good. No, no, like nothing bad. But you um, always, and I, this, this has a follow up question of you being in like say King Street Hotel, a, a nightclub here in Newcastle, and you'd always have a hat on, and you'd sort of be like sort of hide. And it, did you feel like there was a lot of people like because? They knew who you were. What was it like going out there when you were um, – this is back when rugby league was a much more um, – you know, new, people in Newcastle really cared about their footy yeah. club at that point. Yeah. Do you feel watched a lot of the time then? Oh, probably, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't really like being out in public, to be quite honest with you. Um, right towards the back end of my career, obviously, because I was you know, dabbling here and there, that I like to be inside – a house with like behind closed doors with people I trust and stuff mm. like that. So I didn't really like going out. I probably got a bit paranoid and stuff like that by people seeing me too drunk or something like that. So yeah, that's probably I don't know why I wore a hat. What a weirdo. <laughs> I because I I get this and I well, get a bit paranoid about it. Did you ever hear you hear your name a lot? It's weird hearing your full name because I walk if I walk through Woolies, people say my full name. They go, oh Isaac Butterfield. Yeah, well, and I hear you hear it. You're like, like, like it's just a weird. The way you hear the petrol station. Yeah. It was funny. I'm lo- looking at Jay coming out with the with the monsters, and this dude just double backs like Jared. I assume you're oh, Jared Mullen. Yeah, it's and weird like, hearing your name. Full yeah. name. Just call me Jared. Or yeah, it's <laughs> weird hearing your full name. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, get I get your missus to call me Jared Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jared Mullen. <laughs> Do it in Ray Warren's voice. Oh, Jared Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. He's monsters in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is 14. weird, isn't it? It is it's weird, there. and I've never spoken to anyone else about that. Like, uh, you know, it's just a weird thing to hear your full name when you're just walking, and you're like, "Yeah." They feel like they have to say your full name. I don't know. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's it just sounds it's like just, there is to you. It's just <laughs> you. I'm just sick of people wanting to get a piece of me. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking, you do have just, a problem. just let me live my life. You know, if I'm a king, people trying to fight you in public. That, that is also. Pulled, that pulled that on at a coffee shop the other day. Someone tried to fight me at a coffee shop. Coffee shop. Yeah, the local coffee shop. He said, and I quote, a funny man. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> this will be good. Yeah. And he, he said, mate, if your missus wasn't here, I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd clean you up. Did He's you just tell him that you're a two-stripe white belt at Gracie Bar? Two-stripe. <laughs> I mentioned the stripe. Sound it too <laughs> I said, I'm going to pull guard on you, man. You, uh, no, I just said my wife. Hey, funny man. That's, a, that's actually <laughs> Hey, footy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. You got a just, joke now, funny boy? I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> I tried to ex- – you can't explain to people, like – with stand up, it's it's hard to explain to people who are already angry at you that you know I'm just fucking around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they were he was pretty mad and he was there with his family and his missus was trying to calm him down and and I was there holding my dog and I was just like I had a coffee. I was like, oh no. Uh, was he waiting in line for his coffee? And he was just sitting down with his family having breakfast. So you what, did have a coffee. He had a coffee. I had a oh, coffee. Yeah, well, you know, we had a lot in common. Yeah, I, thought, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought he would. I thought he would wait We've for got common coffee. grounds. Like, no, oh, no. I need my coffee. You need that caffeine. Gonna, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just I think it's. I think it's bizarre, but to you, because like, like, like yourself, I'm a avid. You know, I love. Like, I watched Burt Kreischer's spe- special last night. Razzle yeah. Dazzle. It's sensational. Nice. Um, he's poor kids and wife. Jesus Christ. But yeah. it's like you, you look at kind of the way the Americans are. Like mm. they're just so cruisy, easy going. But for some reason, this country, everyone's got tall poppy syndrome and it's like, you know, how dare you be funny and successful? I must try and fight you and bring you down. Well, it's just strange that... (laughs) That's what blew it on to me. (laughs) It's not a fight me. (laughs) How dare you play for me? It's it's just (laughs) weird that people get so mad about jokes. Yeah. Like it is... Like me saying a joke that may or may not be sexist or racist or whatever. They generally yeah. are those things. But but they're <laughs> jokes because no, no. if you are being genuinely racist, then yeah, you probably cop you, you deserve a cop one around the fucking chin. But if you're on stage at a comedy show yeah. telling jokes to people, and you're going to that comedy show to, to see to it, it, yeah, and you're blowing up about it, why are you actually going to the show? Well, what do you? Yeah. And particularly when you when you hear like jokes about other cultures or other people, other gen, whatever. And you laugh at them, but when it's about you, you get mad. Yeah. That's what shits me. Mm. And and what what it also annoys me is when people conflate your jokes with what you actually believe. Yeah, you know people. You know people might think that I'm this or that or the other. And in reality, it's like no man. Like I'm. I want to see all all positive and all happiness and all that type of Which shit. Which is quite bizarre because mm. like not only are you a stand up, but you've also got this platform here where. Yeah, like there is a bit of banter and carry on, but I think there's a lot of organic, like, um, 
organicness to yourself here as well. Do you know what I mean? Like you're the first person to kind of give someone a rap. The the guests like the you know like vegan booty and like you know Geordie and stuff like you you, br- you don't bring a specific type of person no. on here like masculine males. There's you know females. There's Speak you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but I think that in itself, if you've got half a half a brain, you can see that you're just a, a genuine a genuine organic dude. Yeah. And yeah, you tell dick do- jokes for a living, but that's not who you like. You're you're a husband. You're a dog owner. You're a mate. You're a son. Like. And people like lose all like aspect of that because they see this dude on stage telling jokes, getting laughs. Well, my my old man said to me, May, maybe you need to make it more clear that you know there's a part of you that's a stand up and there's a part of you that's. A, but I was like, mate, how do you do that? Like yeah. with people, if people want to be mad at you, if they want to be offended, if they want to be angry, they will just do it. They'll just do it. Yeah. Which, just which do will it. be quite funny, I reckon, when you um, the contrast to that when when Bubs comes and they see that softer side of you to be. It'll be quite interesting to see how your audience, especially mm. the females, will turn because they kind of see you from like a, a more nurturing parental sort of figure as opposed to oh, Isaac Battlefield, he's just a cunt. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is literally yeah. their opinion. Yeah, uh, I'll, and I'll read the comments. <laughs> man, I get fucking hammered in the comments. Like, you know, Marlo, if you think you got a bit of heat, Jesus no, Christ. I no, I'll never read the comment. My mum reads the comments. Oh, and nice. then. So on the online stuff, and then she'll ring me to tell me <laughs> that this person. I said, I don't want to know. This person said this. It doesn't even have social media. It's, yeah, and I'm just like, oh, thanks, mum. Uh, anything else? No, see you later. So everyone hates me. Cheers, mum. You could always day. just lean into it. Like you could start up an Instagram and just have like the profile picture of the Coke logo. Just lean into it. Yeah. And then if people want to talk shit, then it's all good. Because you push your personal brand. I don't know if this is something you're even interested in, but you push your personal brand. Like, who gives a shit? If people want to talk shit about you, it is what it is. Yeah. Comes with the comes with the territory. Yeah. You're a podcast host. Bluey's going to cop some shit. You'll cop some shit for this, that, or the other. Who gives a fuck, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, at the end of the day, I think, you know, things that are said in moments don't define a person, right? Because everyone can be a cunt in a moment. Mm. It's just, you know, that moment someone's just going to screen grab it, copy and paste it and remember it forever. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, look, you know, a lot of people do give Jay a lot of flap, but, you know, you kind of look what, like, look what he's doing. Like, you know, Les, like... Black Magic's turnaround in in this in the space that he's been here. Gay better Sorry, right BM. Out. BM. Yeah, BM. Yeah, BM. Like <laughs> it's it's amazing. Is that like the Jewish news? The JM? Yeah. You just uh, Jewish yeah, Jewish, Jewish yeah. media? Yeah. You have to bleep it out. Like you, you see what, what Jay does in the community and you know how far this amazing kids come and there's no front page on the Daily Telegraph of that. It's only when he trips and falls and, you know, has hit his head a hundred times that they want to plaster him on the front page of the media. But mm. you see the good stuff and amazing stuff that he does now and it's like, where's that in the media? And that's the difference between, like, the legacy media, like the papers and that, and what you see on YouTube. Like, people watch this and they go, that's great, that's awesome. Yeah. But they, they won't talk about it. Like, they'll pretend it never happened. You could right now, you could say the most profound thing and even if it went past... No chance of it coming from us. Not from our... Yeah. It's not on our podcast. I was podcast. about to say it. No, bro, I'm not going to. Don't, keep it. Yeah. Keep it for your own podcast. Oh. It's not welcome on our show. You can say the most profound thing yeah. and they would pretend that it never happened yeah. because it's not through their sort of... Yeah. They're the gatekeepers of this, that and the other. Well, it's, yeah. not, it's not It's not. Um, in line with their narratives. No. Yeah. And, and people, they... I don't know. They have this air of arrogance. I was debating... Or not debating. I was having an argument with a guy from the New Castle Herald a while ago about the sports section. Name? I can't remember who it was. It was one of them. Anyway. Oh, that narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> and and I only three bikes that work there. Because they were trying to set, they were trying to like, hey, you got to sign up for the for the Herald and all this type of stuff. And I commented, I said, this is bullshit. No one's going to fucking sign up. You give it away, and then if people want to, you know, if you yeah. want to put some advertising, that's how you make money. Yeah. And because my old man was writing for the paper, the time he said, what you think your old man's article should just get. In for free, people should get it for free. I was like, yes, yeah. that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Give it out for free, and if then people want to become a part of it, then they will. Yeah, Just like you can with our Patreon for a dollar a month. Dollar a month, and you get a Patreon, fifteen percent off Parker Macros. Dollar, but fuck of it. Fuck who gives a shit. <laughs> but good point though, Bluey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can join the Patreon. You get access to this podcast every single week live when Gabe turns up. Today, this is a different one. Too hard. Not here. Yeah. What a cunt. <laughs> And uh, that's one thing I want to do. I want to wrap you boys on as well, and especially self butty like to become like to become so self sufficient 
um, and be your own boss and create what you've created here and have that that Patreon subscription, like that is an amazing feat within itself. Sorry to segue, but like I've got to give credit where credit's due. And like between mm-hmm. yourself and Jace McAlpine from Gypsy Tales, like I, the two best podcasts. Oh, he kills it. Yeah, man. two best He's podcasts so in good. Australia. And like, you know, I've been podcasting for what, three or four years now, and you guys are like kind of my my Rogans of Australia. You know what I mean? You and Jay. I'll accept. And I'll accept. Yeah, that yeah. So it's <laughs> it's, but it's amazing. It's amazing to see someone who puts in the top because I could not only imagine how much time and effort goes into you know creating content, being able to put stuff out, and then obviously you know adhering to ticking boxes for for sponsors and stuff like that. But yeah, it's amazing what you guys do, man. So I just want to give thanks, you guys man. a massive thanks. thumbs up. But it's you that, know what it's, it's like too. Yeah. Thanks, mate. But you know what it's like too. Like when it's something you enjoy like you do your podcast it's not like work like i mean it's it's different for you because it is work well it's easy for, for like yeah it's easy for bluey he just turns but up like, someone like you <laughs> but like you know what it's like you're blowing up hey? trying to get here today you're blowing up well i was halfway to your house <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry my wife is having a baby mate <laughs> yeah, no. sorry to be a no, disappointment i'm mad at anyone i'm mad at claire <laughs> no but what i was gonna say is like you know like it's constipation uh, sorry sorry claire <laughs> It's like an outlet, like it's like a creative outlet. So it's not yeah. like, but it's different for you because it is your job. Well, it is, and, like, and, and for I, us, I, it's like it's still fun. But for, I would fun, imagine yeah. for you, for no, it's still fun. Like, it's still fun for me. But I, it's like a job. Like if I don't feel like doing it, for example, like if you don't feel like doing it one week, it doesn't matter if you don't do it. You just didn't. But I don't. I out. don't not do it. Because yeah, if I give myself an out, I will always take. Yeah. I've always been weak like that. Yeah. Like I've always been. Don't agree with me. I've always been really <laughs> weak like that. Piss weak. I will always take the easy one out. And <laughs> if I if I give myself an out, I'll take it. And so that's, that's why you can't do it. And that's where I was. Been like that. Always, always yeah. been like that with footy, with training, with whatever, whether it's diet. I've always I taken the easy option. Your old man letting you do that. You but know, he, so I don't know, I don't know. He was he's extremely driven, oh, and yeah. that's where he, why he got to where he is. He's just an yeah. old tough prick, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, he he's with very very different personalities. Oh, well, I mean, similar personalities, but different sort of different styles. People. I think very different people. Yeah. But I think that that's that, that's good in a way. I mean, if I was like him, I wouldn't be in the position that I am now. He, he you know, obviously he's not a humorous person whatsoever. But <laughs> it was pretty funny the other week when we had him on. I didn't mind it. You reckon? He's very, very well, 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 well groomed. What well about his hair? Looks good. Yeah, he's yeah. very. There's a bit mate, of Clooney. There's a bit of George Clooney. Mate, like. yeah, yeah. I was looking at his. I'm going. Look how thick that is. Still. It is. It is pretty thick. It's thick. You, he, were, you were jealous. I was jealous. He had the best hairline by mile when he was on with us. Oh like, yeah. He once dyed it. He come home and he had grey hair, and then he came home and he had brown hair. Oh, that's not. Cool. And mum was just filthy. That <laughs> was <laughs> great with the white beard. He looks I've like been Gordon trying Wright. to get him to grow a nice Gordon white Wright. beard. <laughs> the king. Shout out to Gordon. The king Wright. Gordon. Oh, um, he's a, he is. He's a lunatic. How many? F- how much fucking juice is he on? He is huge on everything. Well, I'm. I'm the opposite. I'm B team. I'm Craig Jones. So. Craig Jones. Yeah, like Craig yeah. Jones. Gotcha. Well, actually, I was supposed to have his brother on my podcast today to do a check in with him with a, with AJ, but um, you know, I ended up having to look after my daughter. But Spion, mate, those Spion, those yeah. guys, Selfish those those kids. guys, like you look kids. at Craig, like as you said, like lean into it. Like Craig's won two silver mod- medals at ADCC. And he's got like Jordan Burrows has got always gold and he's got always silver. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like if you and he in his promotions, he's like, if you want to become the second best yeah. in your weight category, come and train at the B team. The B team. <laughs> that's what it's all about. That's fucking leaning yeah. into it. I'm yeah. telling you. Like yeah. people just don't they they're te- and this would be sort of what you would be uh, told about in media training back at the nights, you know, like if with the NRL, they they teach you how to deal with the media. But it's all completely wrong. Yeah. Oh, like you they, give him sound deal with, bites. Deal with the media. Oh, credit to the boys. Well, how boring uh, is that yeah. shit? Yeah, uh, um, credit to the boys. One week forwards at a time. went forward. Um, <laughs> we scored more points as opposition. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. So what's just the point like, of asking these oh, questions? Just, I've said this honestly. for years. Like the the NRL needs like a Conor McGregor, someone to go out there and just like say, no, I'm going to fucking take. Jar- I'm playing Jarrod Weir at Hargraves this weekend. I'm going to take his fucking head off. Yeah. That's first tackle. I'm going to like. How many tickets does that sell? Or even back in the day, they would have said that. Like, for back sure. In the eighties, Spud, Spud, Spud Carroll, yeah. Chief, yeah. Yeah. Martin Bella, those. That's how they kids. sold games. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You, you, those rivalries. They don't. You People don't have love, those rivalries they, anymore. They still talk about it now, thirty years later. Mate, I watched. Every single NRLW game last year, I didn't watch. I watched the Origin. That was it in the men's. Origin was wild last yeah. year. Yeah, it was good. Do you remember it the old interview? You seen those old interviews that come out with like Brent Todd, and they ask him like, "Remember Brent Todd? 
played for Canberra and they said Brent Todd. Brent, he just signed with the Gold Coast Seagulls at the time. They said, Brent, oh, how come yes, you've moved yes. to the oh, yeah. how come you moved but like those ones? Yeah. They said, How come you've come up to the Gold Coast? And he goes, Oh, well, uh, the meter maids are all really good looking and I want to fuck them all. <laughs> and he said it, he said it. And there's ones of like Wally Lewis. He's like, Yeah, yeah I've got to feed the chooks at your fucking Christmas block. He's just giving it to these journos. Yeah, yeah. It's all on video. But that's yeah. like imagine if that happened now. Oh. Yeah, it's because the news is brought to you by (laughs) Pfizer. Yeah, exactly. Man, I just, that does my head in because I know, I know footballers and I know how they actually sort of think. Like they want to, they want to inflict pain on the, like the blokes they're playing against. They want to hurt people, particularly forwards and that type of shit. But they just have to pretend that they're in a serious, like, yeah, businessman. And it's just, it's it's just gross. I hate, and I think that's why a lot of people move away from the game. I'm not interested. I watch the Knights play because I love the Knights. That's the only reason, right? I was brought up like that. Unfortunately, that's how I'll always be. Uh, It's a tough life. Um, And my son's going to cop the same shit because he's already got a Knights jersey, that poor fucking thing. Now, (laughs) I bought him a card too, just got A card? Have you got him? What What do you got? I don't know. Oh, I'll go on your mallow. Hey, black magic. What do you, hey, what do you got? <laughs> oh, in card savers too. Yeah. Oh, you love cards. Yeah, I do love like cards. About three bucks on eBay. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Oh, mallow. There you go. That's silky. Yeah. Fucking oath. Yeah. Some beautiful. Once for bluey. <laughs> one do you want? No, I'm joking. No, they're both. Like, they're That's I'm, grouse, I'm basically like his manager. I'll get, I'll get him. <laughs> he's got all this stuff. I'm like, mate, sign it and give it away to people. People That's respect awesome. that. That's sick. I'm going to yeah. see what I've got. For We're exchanging gifts now. No, I, I don't give know. him a face mask. I bought one. Hey, while Bucks is <laughs> rummaging for uh, prezies, I actually yeah. was excited to have you guys on and talk about the sobriety journey. Yeah, because yeah. like, obviously, we've alluded to it, but I don't mind partying. Yeah, yeah. But it has crossed my mind from time to time. Not that. Like you know, Steve O from Jackass. Yep. I listen to Steve O a fair bit. Like he does Wild Ride. Oh, he's obviously brother. been clean. Great for podcast too. Unreal. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about like he's like, and I know like a lot of like sobriety and your journey in sobriety is about gratitude. Like yep. it becomes about gratitude. And Steve O talks about he's grateful for hitting that rock bottom, kind of like what you mm. guys did in a way, oh, and how it led to that. Yes. Um. Yeah, and I was just sort of interested in like your own journey. Like, did you follow? You know, there's like the twelve steps. I remember I read Russell Brand's book. Yep. Like it's kind of yeah. his take on yep. the 12 steps. I kind of got kind of a loose idea of what yeah. it works. Did you just follow like a 12-step program some to it? Do you stick to that? or people, just some people get clean their own way. Like I like find a high power, do the 12 steps. So I tried the 12 steps and it so didn't really you? work. Yeah. Like I did, just didn't really buy into it. Um, I just got to a point where like I've got a three-year-old daughter now and what drives me is she'll never see her dad drunk or off his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And that's... You know, they call it white knuckle on it where you're sort of just doing it like I'm not going to use, not going to use, but yeah. still do meetings and stuff like that. Go to NA meetings and just listen to other people's, you know, stories and stuff because you, you seriously think you're the only one going through it. Yeah. And you're like, mm. I'm the only fucking loser going around. Yeah. And someone will stand up and tell your story and yeah. you just go, you know, there's uh-huh. other people sort of, you know, struggling that. But um, every day gets easier. It yeah. seriously does. Yeah. Like every day you wake up clean, like, um, like Sunday mornings and that, you can actually enjoy Sunday mornings yeah. rather than. Yeah. You know, Sundays yeah. are a great day And a lot of people Miss out on that Because oh, they're they off do, Their yeah. fucking head on yeah. Saturday 100%, 100%. I'd yeah. miss the whole what, what, I'll go on Friday And like get on Monday And just like And just hate myself yeah. Like Till Friday And, and then, then go again Just yeah. in time to go and, again yeah, And then yeah. love myself yeah. again And yeah. then hate myself again It was just like yeah. It's just a, such a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. I guess from my perspective, um, I want to shout out to my uh, Monday night meeting, uh, the Heartbeat at Toronto. Um, that's my NA um, home group. So, uh, same thing, you know. I guess there's um, for me, it was like I, I I don't have any desire to drink or drug again, um, and you know I'm quite proud of that. But in terms of the twelve steps, no, I, I didn't follow anything. It was just for me, it was like I had enough. I'd done it. Like my life was amazing, and I wanted to keep it on that same trajectory and, and grow it even further. Um, but that's not to deny that there is still underlying issues. Um, you know, Stevie Morris. I'll quote this all day. You know, one of the greatest men. You guys got to have him on this podcast. He's an amazing human being. Um, you can jump in the river and try and save someone from drowning. But you need them to swim to the bank and walk to the start of the river and re- like figure out why they jumped in the river to start with. Mm. You know, for me, it was you know a lot of underlining childhood trauma. Um, you know, I did a podcast with with Matt Clark on Clark's Corner, and um, I gave a, a you know an hour and a half overview on on my journey and kind of how I got to where I am today. Um, but that's that's just it. You know what I mean? And you have to understand what your why is, what your purpose is, like in anything in life. Um, but as Jazz said, like. I, 
I, I, mate, I love Sunday mornings with my girls. Mm. You know, if we have a sleep in, we have a sleep in, we get up, we walk the dogs, we go for coffee, we go to the beach, we go to the, the, the markets. And, you know, by 12 o'clock, you're home, you have something to eat, Bubs has a sleep, you do you do some chores for the truck or whatever else. And then, you know, you, you chuck the footy on at three or, you know, you, you have a, a family sleep or, you know, you watch a movie together. Like Sundays for me is all about the Stone family. Yeah. And that's just what it's about where... You know, I wouldn't come yeah. home till Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Look, blue, like, don't get me wrong. Like, <clears throat> looking back, you had some fun times. Like, 100%. You, 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 like, you do have some great memories, and and that sometimes you do miss sitting around, like say, like at a pub, just having a beer, just just with the boys. Where I can, I can do that now sober, but you sort of still do miss that. But it's like. I know I can't go for a couple of beers. Yeah. Like some blokes can go, I'm going for three beers going home. No. Yeah. If I have one beer, that's it's, it. It's two days. It's, and, yeah. 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 I'm over, one sip of beer, right, I make the phone call, let's go, you know. Yeah. And then it's just, I won't stop until I can pretty much cut, you know what I mean? Yeah, so 100%. It's just, if I don't start, I'll, you know, never going to do it Then it's not yeah. going to yeah. be So, issue. yeah. But like, we've got some great memories, mate. 100%. Yeah. And that was the other thing I was going to say, like, so did you find when you made that decision – how, how, how did it affect you socially, I guess? Because like, I know, like, oh, your yeah. circle of mates. Super, yeah. Yeah. Super, it would be big. Circle of mates is scared. Well, I, I went on a very in, in like, I went on a very inward journey and kind of at that time when I made that decision when my daughter was born, um, the person we're speaking about before, you know, he's best, former best mate, and they'd come back together after three years of not talking and then that's how Jay and I met. And then, you know, I met Stevie Morris. So I was quite lucky that I went super, like, introverted and, from, and away from everything because it was like, you know, I, I just need to do my own thing now. But I was so blessed at the same time that I brought someone like Jared into my life, you know, Stevie Morris and, you know, the, the three of us, you know, what, Stevie, six years, you were, you know, kind of three years at the time. And, you know, I was, you know, going through my stuff. Like, I was lucky that, you know, I removed myself from this people, but... I gained these amazing people, strong men who, you know, gave me support as well. So, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it goes through stages. I'm at the point now, like, Jerry, like, I, I can go to the pub, I can go to the boxing, I can go to any event. Yeah. And all the boys have respect for me where they're just like, you know, I'll, I'll be like, boys, I'm driving, I'll come pick you up. And they'll they'll buy me, like, a 10-pack of mini Coke, Coke Zero cans or, so, you know, make well, sure that well, they're... Lucky you said Coke Zero. Then <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Well, you know... Like You're doing it wrong. A four-pack four, four four of Monsters or something like that. Like so I'm, I'm quite lucky from that perspective as well. But, yeah, like, it, it, it is like... At the end of the day, it comes down to you. Like, if you're going to keep going out with guys who are going to keep trying to put stuff out in front of you, it's up to you whether you keep mm. putting yourself in that position because yeah. I guess at some stage you're going to break. So you've got to remove those people from your life. For sure. I've been saying that too. Like, yeah. I don't... I look down on people who still do no, that at all. No. Like everyone goes through their own journeys. They, yeah. they can do what they want, but I'm, I'm in my own journey now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know I, I don't want to go back down that path, but I, I don't look at people on it and go, "Oh, look at you." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. I've, lived, I've got empathy for them. I do. Know? I I look down. You on look them. down. Yeah, it's because you're taller. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Not. Do you think it's got something to do with football culture, or is it just bloke culture? Well, I guess oh. from my perspective, my perspective was trauma. Um, you know, childhood trauma. You know, going through you know, broken homes and being homeless at 13, running away from home at 13 and stuff like that. So from my perspective, it was trauma. And I guess if you look at yours, yours is traumatic as well. Yeah, well, obviously started before all that sort of shit happened, but it just spiraled way out of control. Like, I could not leave the house without being off your head in some way, say like on Oxycontin or, yeah. or, or Coke or something like that. Because, mm. you know, in Newcastle, like small town, I'm thinking oh, that bloke's talking about it. Like, people are probably just having coffee talking about yeah. hating you. Yeah. So <laughs> There's every chance. That's <laughs> every chance. I'm like, no, they're talking that's about me. That's last two months of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, that's what I think. I'll be that paranoid. So I just, yeah, I have to be, yeah, but yeah, everyone's, yeah, that's, that's the way I was Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Everyone's journey is going to be different, Blue, you know what I mean? Um, But, you know, from my perspective, it was, by far the best thing I ever did, and it's made me a, a much better human being. And, mm. and that's the that's the biggest compliment you can get is when the people closest to you see you um, be able to deal with something where you might have carried on and mm. chucked a tantrum, where you can actually process that and handle that like an adult now. Like that's that's where it's the most rewarding for me. It's not the money saved or the health or anything like that. It's the people who I love and respect the most when they can see the change in you and go, 
proud of you. You know, you're handling stuff. Because you've got to clear your mind. Yeah. Like, you, know, when you, you, know, you know, when you come in there and lock off three days, and then su- a problem comes up. It's only that big, but it's the Ma- worst. Mound out of a molehill. It's yeah. like oh, no, I can't deal with this now. Yeah. But when you're sober, it's like yeah, whatever. You know yeah. what I, mean? I always get it like because you know you go like over the festive period, like Christmas and stuff, and all you're doing is eating and drinking. You're out with the boys yeah. and and whatever. And then I always have a big detox. I always have six or eight weeks, and I always go like. You could feel like this all the time. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what it's like. Once you get like five yeah. weeks off, you just like your productivity, like everything's just like, yeah. oh, this is mad. And then you do, must you, just, do you go reward yourself for that? It depends, mate. Like yeah. there's usually a couple of birthdays around then. But yeah. like, yeah, I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, I haven't had a drink for a while. Like I'll go and yeah. have a tear. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like the, just that feeling of like, and then I think like, oh, you could actually be like that all the time. Yeah. And like, mm. I'm sure everyone's like, you know what it's like, your head's foggy. Yeah. And then you usually back it up with like a few shit feeds as well. And you oh, don't train yeah. and like. And you look like shit. Yeah. And then like, you hate yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck, well, I may as well hit the kernel again. Like it's just like it's just that cycle. It is. Like, it's a negative yeah. feedback. I, yeah. I and mean, I barely drink. Like very, yeah. very rarely. I, the last I can say. <laughs> well, there's alcohol full. everywhere. Well, that, that has been there for ages. I barely like, mate. I I might have two or three beers on stage when I'm touring, and that's it. And that's because I need to be. Mm. I need to work every day. Yeah. And if I don't work every day, then I fall behind. I was going to yeah, ask you that, yeah. Butty, um, in terms of like being able to, do you have the drink to settle your nerves or to somewhat get on the same level as the crowd? Uh, no, I can do it. I can do it either way. It doesn't help me settle the nerves. Yeah. I, um, the, I've only been pissed on stage once and that was in Fremantle. I was drinking doubles of whiskey. <laughs> And I did two hours on stage because I was off my head. I was just talking absolute shit <laughs> and I just kept going. And I just got in some mad argument with some bloke in the front row. <laughs> so it was a great set. It just went on and on. Like the first 45 minutes, killed it. The other, the rest yeah, of like, it. I thought it was going to go for an hour. It was, was, a, su- <laughs> up, was, it it was a Sunday night fuck too. You, I was like, fuck, fuck you. <laughs> there was a bloke at suicide watch yeah. for three days. Oh, man. I, I, yeah, there's been, I've said some horrible things. Um, what do you uh, reckon about like – an idol of yours, like Jim Jeffries. Yeah. And he was right up it for yeah. the bulk of his career. And he's stopped drinking and taking drugs, but just smokes pot now. Mm-hmm. Like, Cali sober. Yeah. Is that what, yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah. Cali yeah. sober. So yeah. what, what's your take on that? Cause I thought that was quite interesting. Cause he was like very loose. Well, I don't know. I guess from, from, uh, from my perspective is that he's a pretty highly strung dude, right? Like, yeah. And his energy as a performer is intense. Mm. It's like an hour of, Fuck, yeah, <laughs> this guy's yeah, yeah. brutal. Um, but I don't know. I guess you get to a point in life where um, if you're running that hot and lean all the time, like I used to be proud of being idling at 75. Like people go, oh, how'd you go zero to 100? Like, mate, I fucking idle at 75. I'm ready to go any time. When, <laughs> when, <laughs> Dale Silva. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're all friends. <laughs> when, when now I'm like, I'm sorry, the opposite. I'm like, man, I, 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 I want to be... 10 and 20 yeah. and just cruising you yeah. know what I mean I think you just get to a stage where you fucking get but you got to learn how to out. do that too yeah. like this is something I was saying before my old man he's very like he's always been you know very fired up and ready to go and all that type of stuff he grew up you know in the basically in the ghetto of Penrith uh, but now he's all about we were talking about this the other day breathing and you know meditation and the other day he was, we were at uh, the Charlie's Run for Kids, which is the hat I'm wearing, the charity that they uh, they, they run from Seals Rocks to Dudley. Yeah. They raise they raise 180 k, awesome. amazing work. Shout out to um, Benny uh, Benny Neal and and Jess Hollier, yeah, Benny from Newby Burger Co. Yep. yeah, yeah, put in massive efforts. Amazing work, son Zave, yeah, yep, and uh, and and my little brother Darcy, he ran it as well, and he was on fire, and he's big, he's bigger than me. He's what is it? It's 150 kilometers or something. 150 k's, yeah. yeah. And he, well, he wasn't able to run the whole thing because they have to have certain um, insurances to run on the roads. He was only able to do the off-road stuff. Okay. Who Good runs, way to get out of it. 150 k. It's big. I was I was talking about this with a mate of mine, Stretch, and he was saying, I, well, he was saying, oh, everyone's so sore. I reckon it would be easier to run it in two days, hear me out, rather than five days. Because five days, and you've got to be so fucking sore. Doms, yeah. Like, yeah, your, yeah. your knees Body. are gone, all the inflammation's caught yeah. up with you. But anyway, just do it in one hit then. Well, that's what I'm saying, Cam Haynes style. Um, where was I even fucking going with that? Yeah, they done. A, they do. They do a great, great job. Great job. Yeah. yeah I was going. Really I was had a point, it. but they do a great oh, job. Oh, you're so talking about your dad with breathing, right? So yeah. yeah, we're out there. They have this big like everyone in in Dudley gets out, and they had about a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred people there, and he's just in the middle of them on the ground, knees up, arms up ahead, above his head, laying down, like nothing's worrying him. Everyone's like looking at him, like, "Is he all right?" He's laying on the ground. Yeah, 
He, well, he looked like I've actually. I'll find the photo because it's quite he. funny. He, he was just look, like everyone's like, "Well, who the fuck is this prick?" And what is he's wrong a very with him? Knowledgeable man. He's, man. A very he's a very smart guy. He's very he's really wise, yeah. man. He's very well read. Like, just mm. if you ask him a question on anything, he'll give you. This was him the other day. Like everyone's just sort of have a look at that. Yeah, I would have thought something was wrong. He was just laying there. This oh. is a, like a thousand people around. He's just laying That's there. Like he's done a hammy. He's just he did have a heart attack. attack. Too. Is that Kyle Pong after the strike? <laughs> <laughs> the third one. The third one. Pong it down. Kaylin's management team, please do not sue, sue me. <laughs> I did I'm hear it somewhere. It. I'm running with it. Yeah. Oh, it's gospel. It's gospel. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I disagree. Did, did you find when you got so you know? Did you find like I? If I'm not boozing right, if I have a weekend off the food, uh, off the grog, I'll treat myself to some mad food. Mm. Did you find you were substituting because you say off the sauce or like, off yeah, whatever? The addiction. Did what, you what did you replace it all for? Did you replace it at all? Yeah, uh, yeah. like uh, gym, like working out. Like yeah. I have to go to the gym in the mornings, get it over and done with, yeah. just because it starts my day well. If yeah. I don't go to the gym in the morning, I've at what shit time do you go to the gym? Four o'clock yeah, in nice. the morning. Yeah. Really? <laughs> get up before your addiction gets up. They yeah. say. Yeah. That's yeah. So that's matter. Yeah. Every morning, four to six, and then actually go to another gym after that, yeah. and then pick. Up BM at seven thirty. We have nothing but fun, don't we, cuz? <laughs> so, <laughs> so why, convincing. why don't you get up at four? He, get, he just goes to sleep. <laughs> You're asleep. Asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty <laughs> fair I'll, answer. I'll pick you up at one time. I just want to call to six, something like that. And That's pretty early. Yeah, to come up here. All yep. up here and it got cancelled. I wasn't angry. I wasn't angry. <laughs> <laughs> he was asking for fuel money, eh? <laughs> I, I completely forgot you were in the gong. I was like, oh, yeah, no. Nah, yeah, Fake right. Steel City. I, I, I thought you were in Central Coast, yeah. but obviously not. No. Yeah. Oh, from my I wouldn't have blown up for the Central Coast. From my perspective, I'll I... still have petrol money, surely. 100%. You got yeah. a shirt. It says uh, Peace in the Middle East on it. It's a, it's a drawing with me, Osama bin Laden, <laughs> and... Uh, oh, yeah, Perfect. and uh, <laughs> three, Saddam Hussein, three terrorists. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I, I, I was the same. I, I got, I got to blue belt. I got my purple belt last year, but yeah, I just went head first into jiu jitsu. Mm. Yeah, so like I'd um, started to drop weight, started to become more athletic, feeling better. So yeah, jiu jitsu became my my healthy addiction. Mm. I guess so, anything yeah. to tame the uh, demons in the mind. Um, that's how I sort of think about it with the shit that I like with my panic attack disorder. All that shit. Mine is work, training, and family. Yeah. And if I get all those things in order, then it's pretty quiet. Yeah, hundred percent. I I say this a lot. Like I, I've, I've got ADHD, and no what's that? No <laughs> <laughs> and Cut. like I, I I get when we get rained out at work because pump and concrete. No word of a lie is like the only, it feels like the only moment where I'm present because you have to be on, mm. right? Like you got 20 grand's worth of concrete that you're putting in. You know, these guys want it in on time. You know, then you're dealing with elements, whether it's got colour in it, whether it's got, you know, whatever else. Um, but those, I get upset more about my, the rain days out because I love that feeling of presence and the hard work and that feeling of like accomplishment because I can get lost. Mate, I can get 10 hours, 12 hours screen time sometimes. If you look at rain day, like I'll just sit there and just scroll PH. For, no, for, no, yeah. for no reason. Yeah, so um, that's why like, I love you know working and then also jiu-jitsu as well because it's like um, I'm not a very cerebral jiu-jitsu player. They call me the, the chief goon at, at, <laughs> at Ronan jiu-jitsu. I'm glad you said goon then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah well, you shut up. Well, you, you don't got, say anything. Well, you got to you got to play to your strengths, right? Like I'm not going to you know play play the way these little guys play. Like I play very goonish jujitsu. That's goon with a G. Yeah, with a G. Yeah, yeah. So um, no comment. I'm just trying to motor through this. Yeah. <laughs> See, Bluey hasn't been cancelled, so yeah. he thinks it's all fun and yeah. games. I can't wait till you get done for sexual assault, or something you cunt. You, you'll, you'll cop it. You'll cop it. Don't worry about yeah. that. But jiu jitsu is definitely one <laughs> of them. What are you saying? Jiu is definitely one of them. And shout out to our club, you know, running jiu jitsu, Matt Lynch. You know, they do, we have the most amazing team. Um, there's no bullshit. There's no, none of this bowing, lining up. You wouldn't even know who's, who's what belt in our gym. Um, and it's just a, a really like I say to this to the younger boys all the time. I'm like, you know, I played in good football teams, and you got to cherish the moments when you have those teams together because it doesn't always last. And mm. at the moment, we've just got this 
killer room with good dudes, good vibes, and amazing amazing coaches. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one thing for me. Like you know, Rogan talks about it all the time, and unless you do jujitsu, you don't really know. But it's like you're so present in that moment mm. and with that other person. It's almost like podcasting one on one. Like you just get into this flow state mm. with this other human being. Which Time is, just disappears. Which is stuff. which is addictive. Like yeah. you, you want more of it. It's awesome. I, I found that it's a great way to learn how to deal with like extreme stress. Like if you're if someone's like you know on top of you, some to- giant dude. And you can remain calm, even though it feels like the whole weight of the is world's this, coming. Is this, this is in. About, this just, is. This I'm is. Sorry, I've got. I've got well, Pride up. Week's just finished. <laughs> if you've got a massive dude on top of you, play on. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. And Slightly you can real. still <laughs> remain calm. I could definitely. Uh, not I'll, too calm. I was actually gonna. I was not, <laughs> keep your heart rate <laughs> down. Where, where are you going with this? <laughs> And yeah. remain erect. I'm getting bored. <laughs> for that entire time. That is a real man. Yeah. It does. Hard. It teaches you how to deal with like real tough situations. Yeah. Real hard, hard, hard situations. Hard, yeah. Like tough. Ex- you know. And I guess the the good thing about sexy situations. The good thing about grappling as well, like you know, no, especially like no gear grappling, like it. It is very, very fast paced and very scramble like, but it, it actually really does teach you and you don't get the the trauma like you do in striking. Like when it, well, you do a fair bit of striking, like and someone slips one through and you cop like yeah, yeah, you get yeah. concussions, mm-hmm. right? Like you do get like knee tears and stuff like that in jujitsu or, you know, strains and it is pretty pretty physical, but I feel it's like it's a tap and it's done. Yeah. You can you can you can be a lot more lo- like lively and go through more Tough situations regularly yeah, without yeah. the like, you know, running the risk of a of, you of a head trauma. You can be going hundred percent against someone, and it can be over in a in a hot second, yeah. and you, no one's hurt. Yeah, do you, like this is something I really I really want my little fella to get into is jits. Yeah, I'm worry about footy with him, just with head knocks. I know, like, I, you know, I've had head knocks and stuff, and uh, my epilepsy is not to do with football, but my neurologist said it's not going to help, so yeah. I, I retired. Uh, particularly if I have to speak for a living, so it's not really great. But I feel like um, <laughs> well, it's not great. Yeah. I don't think Pong will be doing too many fucking after after dinner speaking no. gigs. The poor prick. Stroke. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> he did not have a stroke. Where's the camera? There's only one camera working. That's what I was doing before moving cameras around because our fucking producer didn't turn up. BM's now the producer. <laughs> producer BM. Producer BM. Just take it the minutes. So. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to the bit about the goon. What he said. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, oh the God. big the big topics on this show. Oh, right. Jesus. But yeah, uh, I also don't know what I was talking about. I haven't kid, eaten kid doing though. jujitsu as opposed kid, to playing so footy. Your, yeah. is, your little girl. Do you think yep. she'll do jujitsu? Mate, two things that she well the three things she'll have no choice but to play piano. She comes from. You know her her grandfather being an amazing penis. penis yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that. You well just done. don't stop. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, her, her her grandmother is um, assistant professor of music at the University of Newcastle. Um, so Good I guess music eyes. music's definitely gonna, it's definitely not from me. I'll give you the red hot tip. She got blue eyes from me. That's all about she got. <laughs> um, but uh, gymnastics and jujitsu will See. be you know body awareness and the ability to be able to protect yourself Man, and because co- massive if you look into any kind of schooling or anything like that bullies normally get bullied at home mm-hmm. so they bully at school and bullies seek out fear and yeah. someone who's fearless will not be bullied and that will be my girl I want my daughter I want to be the the father that says to the the boyfriend mate. I'm not going to tell you to watch out for me. You just watch out for her. Like you fuck up, and oh, you're yeah. going to sleep. Still be watching out for you, I reckon. What's that? You still watch out for you. Yeah. You don't mean it. You're obviously yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but like 100, percent like you yeah. know, jujitsu. Like I'm just. Message no, you, yeah, mate. Don't fucking watch out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Never got to worry about me. You're like, I feel like I do. <laughs> Yeah. I could be Cali sober by then. I might be just smoking. Yeah, no, 100%. no, I'm joking. No, but like that's that's the first thing I, I wanted to do because you know I'm five years, in, five and a bit years into my jiu-jitsu journey, and it's definitely um, I, I want to say it's made me a better person. Yeah, you know, it, it really has because I used to think I, I was a bit of a hothead back in the day. I used to do a lot of street fighting. You know, as I said, the seventy-five to hundred thing. Where now it's like, you know, I actually have I have empathy and respect for other human beings mm. and I want to help people and bring people up and I want to be able to protect people 
as opposed to being the scared little boy. And that's all it is. And I think that's what martial arts teaches you. It teaches you that there's always someone bigger and better or smaller and better um, and being humbled by by giving a tap. And that's one thing I've learned as, you know, going from a blue belt to a purple belt too is, is man, I put myself, I spend one night a week training, putting myself in bad positions. Mm. And it's you know there's no ego there. If if one of the, the our blue belts or white belts tap me because I put myself in a position where you know I need to work my but that's it. Remaining calm, like I need to remain calm and problem solve. How do I put remove myself from this position? But how am I going to become a better purple belt and a better jujitsu player and a better human if I don't put myself in horrible positions and just keep smashing everyone every yeah, week? You got to be yeah. be able to go through this uh, this pain of being humbled and I think that comes from doing things like jiu-jitsu or but people even people talk about with ice baths you know like they're like okay it's a a shit situation for two or three minutes and if you can deliberately put yourself into it then all of a sudden you're starting to learn these things about yourself and I think the introspection that you both have gone through and Bluey maybe you've gone through it with different things I know I've been through it with with issues in my life is an important lesson even BM the things you're going through at the moment are important things for you to learn about for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. and going through them at a young age may seem shit at the time but you don't have to deal with them when you're 30 all of a sudden you're dealing with them now and it's a positive thing for you to step over and it's also something you're going to teach your kids you're going to teach your girl your your kids your kids my kids the whole thing is going to be lessons and struggles that you went through you dealt with and you know how to teach the rest of the the people that you're going to be around for your next 50 60 70 years you're on this earth about these problems that you face you dealt with and you navigated and without that then it just sort of goes down that family line if you don't learn how to deal with it then it's now your daughter's problem to deal with yeah your thing, kids yeah, you're going to deal with it yourself you're there's got to be get, somewhere you say no you're going to get yourself right before you help anyone else 100 percent, 100 percent. and you see a lot of people that are fake with mm. this type of shit oh, like yeah. tiktok and instagram people who are just full of shit like you got to do this you got to do that when they've never dealt with anything themselves yeah. so why would you listen to them yeah, no, hundred yeah, percent. Yes, yes, blue. I'm listening to Jordan Peterson at the moment. How is that book going? Mate? It's so. I've got twelve rules for life. Twelve rules for life. Yeah. It's. Well, first of all, I'm not reading it. I'm listening to it. He cheaped out and listened. Well, it's so cheated. hectic. It's so long. Mm. First of all, if that's what's going through his head all the time, no wonder he's on the benzos because that's fucking nuts. It's Man. nuts. But I love that he. There's a chapter about making sure you got everything right before you start blaming the world. Mm-hmm. Like plenty of people are very quick to say, "Oh, it's this and that," but like. Well, there's oh, so many get, people that get, blame Get your own shit in order and then see, it's the, everyone, then it's see what's wrong. Else's fault. Yeah. The majority yeah. of people fault, do yeah. that. Yeah. They go, oh, I want to I want to blame this person, that person, X, Y, Z, when in reality, you know, what have you, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. You know, are you are you overweight? Are you, are you smoking too much? Are you doing this? Are yeah. you actually working on all these? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Bluey, four, Bluey's, yeah. Bluey's <laughs> ticking <laughs> off everything. Three three. Yeah. But if you're not doing that, then who are you to try and – who are you to raise a child? Who are you – to tell people they should or shouldn't be doing it. Who are you to yell at someone for putting graffiti on a wall or yeah. just anything? Yelling at someone for throwing something out of their car. Who the fuck are you? So you need to have that shit in order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, dri- I'm driving along yesterday and, um, I'll, you know, my missus beats herself up a fair bit because she's not performing at the level that she was, you know, before baby, right? Right. Um, and, you know, she got sat down by one of the managing partners and the, you know, he said, you know, it's so amazing to have you back. Um, there Can we will, get the there recording? Will be, there will be a promotion. <laughs> oh, um, oh, oh, my God, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, she sent me a message and saying, you know, I've got this work meeting um, Wednesday. Um, and I'm like, look, I'll take bubs. Go to, go to your meeting in Sydney, you know, whatever else. And um, so she's texted me back and I'm like, oh, I'll just watch record because it's just easy and, you know. I start telling her how much of an amazing human being she is, amazing mother, amazing partner. And then um, I just out of the corner of my eye, I just see this lad at the bus stop in Toronto on the main street with the tomato sauce bottle just coating the seats. Oh. <laughs> while, you, while you're doing the voice recording? Yeah. This is going to be amazing. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm not sure how much you know you actually do for us, but... You do a hell of a lot. I'm as temperamental as... No, I'm fast. Because it's... It's It's not what you do. I'd well and truly just... I'm so proud of you, Lucy. Seriously, you are just so amazing as a mother. It's beautiful. As a partner. What are you doing, (laughs) Carl? Ha, 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 ha,
What is this fucking idiot doing? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you did not get it. Where's my fucking key? I don't know. As I say that the bus pulls that's up and four low. old ladies jump off of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's the yeah. oh. so I'll let I'll let I'll let them go. That's so good. Seriously, mate, that is probably one of the stupidest things you can do. <laughs> that's so awesome. If you weren't a kid, I'd probably fucking slap you. <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? He would have been like 18, 19. Oh, so textbook, oh. textbook lad, like um. Oh, that was so. Impressed. So matching Nike tracksuit with the not with the, the T -ins. T no no. He actually had Asics Cayanos on, but the same blue that was on his his tracksuit was on his pants. So uh, it was on his shoes, and then the it Gucci really hat. And the Gucci degrees in a tracksuit. Well, it was, it was raining yesterday. Um, but oh, sorry for the so and he had a <laughs> he had a Gucci, Gucci hat, Gucci bum bag at the you know, bus stop at Toronto. But killing it, But like as BM's wardrobe you're describing, <laughs> and to and and to my like defence, I thought when you recorded after you pushed lifted your thumb off, it stopped recording. So I've jumped out. I've still got my phone in my hand. Thank God you did. And then I oh. and then I realised it was recording, and I went to delete it, and I sent it to Lucy. Amazing. Yeah, and That's I've great. had to ring her and go, look, it's kind of a bit of a me episode. I've gone from you know awesome. zero to a hundred real quick. So. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, you had the idling thing you're talking about. You weren't idle, and you were just. No, but you did the right thing. Someone needs to tell that kid to pull his fucking head in. But did you know what the most frustrating part of that was? Was that directly across the road is a service New South Wales with a security guard at the front of it. I mean, 15 metres across mm. the road. I stop in the middle of the road, block traffic, and I get out and give this kid a serving right. And then as like I'm walking away, he looks at me like... Good on you, mate. I'm like, this is your job, job dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking in thongs, shorts, and a t shirt. You've got the whole. You're kid the reason on. this brick's here. Yeah. <laughs> fucking oh. useless twat. And we drove past the bus all the way, and there's still tomato sauce everywhere, man. Everywhere. Oh, you didn't wipe it off? No, he, I made him wipe it off. Good, he good. rubbed his nose like but, a little dog. But I, was, yeah, there was a, a line yeah, of traffic, and I was like, yo, yeah. Yeah, you know, kind of had the moment where I'm like, mate, you're not here to save the world. Fucking carry on with your own. That is our story. So, where was this? Yeah. Oh, in Toronto. Yeah, it was on. I was in Toronto yesterday, looking at my my partner's um my my her brother's buying a house out there. Yeah, unfortunately yeah. for them. Yeah, we're and we're, um, we're at cold, cold points. So right. I, I've I've gotten an. I knew I was coming on today, so I went and got a, a quick. You know, oh, dad, looking good. Dad, dad and Dave and a, and a haircut. Well, I'm sorry the cameras yeah. all yeah. fucking failed. Sorry, mate. There's only one working at the <laughs> yeah, moment. Yeah, that's all good. So, and yeah. then and then I'm yeah. you know, in this in this in this moment of you know, you know giving my my missus a a bit of a rap, and it was just like I'm like I would have to be the only person who was seeing this because I don't know. I look at things from a micro perspective, and I just say, so everyone would have seen those who were driven past went oh. But that's that's why kids are the way they are today, mate. Because no one's going to pull them up on it. And look, at the end of the day, I don't think I'm Jesus or anything like that. But I hope that kid do think, does not that? fucking do that again Fred because it's it, it is. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you know, there's people who don't have the luxury of driving a car, or they're too elderly and they mm. don't have, especially around Coal Point and around that area. There's a lot of elderly and retirees, right? So public transport, they rely on it. And you have got a lady with a cane who can't stand up, and there's fucking sauce all over the seat. Oh yeah, it's like, what you do? That was your mum or your grandma, you dickhead. It, yeah. it it takes someone to you know to make a change in someone's life, and maybe. You know, he may he might think about that. I mean, he's a lad, so his life's probably over Already anyway. As but soon as you left, you kept going. Just finished the bottle. <laughs> he broke out the barbecue the sauce at this time. <laughs> oh, he's not going to like this. <laughs> but you know, if yeah, if, yeah. If, if no one does anything, then nothing ever changes. Yeah, hundred percent. That's all about yeah. Dallas. Is. Like it calls call the ACs. He's staunch. Yeah, I, I, mate. I I just I grew up in a you know in a way where it's like you know. Is what it is, you know what I mean, and it doesn't mean that I'm higher than anyone or whatever else. But I just I have zero tolerance for fucking stupidity. And yet you're on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> 
How ironic. How yeah. ironic. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the show. I've oh, got, right. got to put a stop to it for two reasons. Uh, Married at First Sight's on the telly <laughs> Oh, is it? So we've got to get he's home. Uh, we've got to get he's a Derek. Harrison, but yes. Oh, Bronson. Harrison. 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 Bronson. Uh, Bronson. Uh, Axon, Axon, Action, Action Bronson. Bronson. <laughs> Charles Bronson. Oh, Charles no. Bronson. Isn't there a footy player called Bronson Harrison? Bronson, Bronson Harrison. Harrison, yeah. yeah. I, I like, he's a big boy. I like him. I don't I wasn't saying you, Bronson. <laughs> Harrison, Harrison. He's a dairy. He's a dairy. Get him on the show. Yeah, like, oh, mate, yeah. he's next. We'll, we'll bring you in and you can have a fucking... You can... I'll score it tomato sauce all over. Thanks for having us, mate. No, Joe Marlin, Dale Stone, it. I Thank appreciate you. you. And, uh, Tell them great. about your podcast again. To the uh, Point Podcast, yeah, available to, on all podcasts. Yeah, To the Point Podcast, available on all You're your gonna podcasting have me on platforms. What? Mate, oh, oh, Go look at your fucking DMs from me. I've messaged you a hundred times. I, well, and, uh, I bet you they say scene two and just nothing back. Yeah, oh. nothing back. Oh, the well, McDougal uh, yeah, thumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they used to call Dugs the thumb too? I don't know. Maybe that's just his calling card. Um, <laughs> I would like to say also that you, we've been exchanging text messages, but I didn't know anything about you. Yeah. Uh, so you've actually been texting Claire's phone. So I will send you my number. And we, we can, you, you've been texting the missus. That's fucking ordinary. It's um. How did that happen? Well, I d- well I just didn't want to just because he doesn't I, just give his number. I out. don't give me a number out just in case people like Marlo get it. I was going to ask you, what's your number. Yeah, well, right. I'll, I'll give you Claire's. I'll give you Claire's. <laughs> but um, sorry, Dixon. <laughs> but no, we'll give you a little buttsy, little little butts, Marlo yeah, Dixon. Yeah. We're going to call it. But let, yeah, we'll, let's we'll, let's do your show for sure, mate. I would uh, absolutely love it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so and Marlo, you got anything to shout out? Nah. No. Nah. There's been a fair few shout outs. There's been a lot of shout outs. Like, yeah. Coach Coach BM, what do you yeah. got? BM. You got any shout outs? Nah. Shit. <laughs> 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 Papa Macros. There you go. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen. No, very enjoyable. Thanks, boys. Oh, good to see you. Yeah. Very good to see you, buddy. Yeah. We're, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a, a sportsman's lunch at some point. Uh, well not even a sports a long lunch. So it'd be good to have some. Um, I don't know what that used to mean. No, well, it's going to be a short lunch. Okay, good. It's going to be a drive through. Yeah. Uh, Mine will probably be long. <laughs> Yours will probably be long. But we'd, we'd love to have you two on as guests at some point. We're not, we're not sure when we're going to do it, obviously, with the bub coming along. But uh, if you've got the time. Yeah, we, always got time for you, Butsy. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Get I'll, off I'll, his cock. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> love you. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll drive another six hours. <laughs> just uh, bring uh, your fuel yeah, receipts, yeah, mate. No, we're going to do it in Sydney, so it's not in that far. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll do one in the gong just for you. Nah, I'm not going to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, see you later. Fuck off, bye.